everybody, welcome back to part three of the Qatari 132 scale Spitfire Mark 1 build. After last week's marathon uh, building, painting and fitting the cockpit, uh, this week it's been a little bit more straightforward and as you can see I've managed to finish uh, the entire airframe. This is now ready for painting. Uh, there's been one or two uh, little bits and pieces where I've had to take a bit of care, one or two uh, tips and tricks for you. Uh, if you're building the kit so uh, this week we're going to make a start straight away get over to the bench and I'll show you how this all goes together. Okay I'm going to make a start this week uh, not by finishing the fuselage off just yet I'll do that later uh, but to start with I want to cut the uh, wing pieces out uh, and get the main spar fitted uh, that'll give it uh, plenty of time to dry before I come to do any of the rest of the airframe work. This is the uh, gun camera on the upper wing which uh, needs to be removed for this particular aircraft. The wing panel is a lovely fit and it's nice to see the trailing edge really nice and sharp. The uh, join of the wingtip to the underside panel, so the wingtip is integral to the upper uh, wing panel. And sometimes you get a step when that arises on other kits, but not here. The fit there is uh, nice and tight. This is the spar, which is one piece, goes right the way across the span of the aeroplane. making sure that all the sprue gates are absolutely clean. Don't want to interfere with the fit of this piece. Okay, so we'll leave that for an hour or so to set. These are the uh, wheel wells. These are the uh, undercarriage legs and they appear quite a bit further on in the instructions but I've looked at another couple of videos uh, on YouTube about the uh, Qatari Spitfire and both have mentioned some issues with fitting the undercarriage legs. And that's due to the tight fit of this tongue here, which goes up into the wheel well and then slides in to uh, lock the undercarriage into the correct uh, angle. So I want to check fit these before I glue the upper wing panels in, because I want to see what's going on with this before I actually attach the top wing panel. So with the wheel well clipped into place, the undercarriage leg eventually will come up into the inner wheel bay. And that tongue that I showed you slides into this slot here. And it's a very tight fit. So there's a couple of things that I'll do to these. The first is to just thin them out a little bit, top and bottom. Don't want to do it too much because we don't want to make these really slack. You might be able to 
hear that creaking which isn't good uh, on a model kit and what that undercarriage leg is trying to do is to push up this part of the wheel bear here at the back so uh, Katari suggests that we take off a little sliver off this back edge here just to ease the fit a little bit the other uh, reason why it's worth spending some time getting this fit correct is because there's another very fine piece of the undercarriage mechanism it's the hand retraction jack which goes in here as well so it's in the vicinity of this undercarriage leg and this tongue so it's something that if we're pushing and shoving this around too much it's likely to break that jack okay so that's sliding in and out a lot more easily now and eventually it just actually clicks into place but I think it's well worth doing that test fit uh, because you could put the undercarriage in place now but then you've got all the work of uh, fitting the top wing panels and it, in all likelihood the uh, undercarriage leg would get broken at some stage so I don't really think it's an option uh, to fit this now but it is worth doing that adjustment to make sure that that's going to be an easy fit later on. And that's much easier. That's needed a lot less work to get that to fit. So if you're building the kit yourself, make sure you do this uh, trimming here of this tongue on the undercarriage legs before you start to assemble the wings. Uh, otherwise, you're going to run into all sorts of problems and potentially either break the hand retraction mechanism or the undercarriage leg itself which would be even worse. The upper wing panels are just taped here because I want to do a test fit again of the uh, wing to the fuselage. Now Katari give us the wing fillets separately, these parts and tell us to cement these to the wing assembly before offering it up to the fuselage. Sometimes that can cause a problem in other kits. Uh, I doubt it will with this but I'll check it anyway. I've spent a bit of time uh, on these cleaning them up because this face here, this piece, butts up against the fuselage and it's important to uh, remove the sprue get so that you get a nice clean fit of that up against the side of the fuselage. There are also some sprue gates here on the edge that fits onto the wing. They also need to be cleaned up. It's a general principle uh, particularly with this kit as I've mentioned before, is to make sure that all the parts are clean uh, because the tolerances are so tight that it will prevent the uh, fit going together properly. These tabs ensure a really positive fit of the wing fillets and they're a really nice join onto the top wing panel there you can see. So just offer up that wing to the fuselage That's fine, that's going to go together all right. Again, you can hear the click, which is uh, very familiar on this kit, so uh, that's going to be a nice fit. So I've no doubts about fitting the fillets uh, to the wing panels. That's going to go together. Okay, so with the uh, wing test fit done, I'm happy with those. We can move back to the fuselage now. 
Uh, the first thing I want to tackle is this fuselage spine which Qatari give us as one piece and that's because uh, it preserves the rivet detail on the top of the Spitfire fuselage. Uh, obviously if it was a traditional half and half uh, assembly you wouldn't be able to sand the seam and preserve the rivet so this is a much better way of uh, moulding the kit. There's a couple of things that we have to do before fitting this. The first is to uh, put the beacon, the transparent beacon in here. And the other thing is to drill a small 0.3mm hole in this beam. Uh, and that's just to accept a little piece of rigging uh, connecting the beam to the uh, shoulder belt that we fitted uh, in the last episode, this piece here. It must have been some sort of tensioner, I think, but uh, I'm not certain about that. So uh, let's do the beacon first. You'll notice that I've painted some of the dark earth uh, from the camouflage scheme around the beacon space. And the only reason for me doing that is so that uh, you can mask the beacon uh, without quite as much accuracy. It just means that you can preserve a little bit of the paintwork around here on the masking. So that's just a little trick. It'd be difficult to mask cleanly right up to the beacon here so it's a better way of doing it I think. Just make sure that that's properly located. The uh, spine needs to be fitted with a bit of care just to line it up properly so that the rivets uh, show equally on both sides. The best way to do that is to look down and along and you can judge there that uh, the rivet detail is balanced both sides. This is the accumulator door. The engine cowlings go on next. Before I glue these into position you can see they're a perfect fit. I want to uh, paint the exhaust um, shrouds or the insides of the exhaust here. We're going to apply the glue for these cowlings here. This is a really positive uh, location that's provided. And what it also does is it ensures that you're not going to get any glue near the panel line joint. So you're not going to fill the panel line joint and spoil it. The base of the gun sight here needs to be painted. I'm not going to be able to get to it once the fuel tank cover's on. 
and there's also uh, some decals provided in the kit so I'll get that done now and then we can finish off this cowling assembly I've just given this uh, a coat of flat varnish after applying the little decal on the uh, bottom of the gun sight there so this can now go in The uh, fuel tank cover here just stands a little bit proud, but that's correct. Next we move on to the tailplane now. got uh, our first empty sprue. If you remember back in part one, if you've seen that, I was debating about the position of the rudder pedals being offset. And it never occurred to me at the time that the reason was that Qatari mould the uh, rudder attachment offset as well. As well as the elevators, so the whole tail surfaces uh, have got a bit of deflection on them. One little detail that Qatari suggests to us is to drill the holes out here in the end of the horizontal stabiliser, just to add a little bit more detail. Clean up the seams with the stabiliser off the aircraft. It's just easy to do it this way. You can get right up to the inboard side. I'll put some glue on there but it doesn't really need it. It's uh, quite a nice tight fit in there. So with the stabiliser in place we can put the elevator on. As I said they're deflected. And uh, when you've got something like this where you've got a tab going into a slot. I always put the glue in the slot. If you put the glue on the tab, when you push it in, it tends to force the glue back out and into the hinge, which spoils the join. So what that's doing now is the tabs are pushing the glue inwards and out of the way. So it's a much cleaner way of uh, fitting 
parts like that. You can also wick a little bit of extra thin into the join as well. That's the fuselage done uh, as far as Katari wants us to at the moment. We don't put the rudder or this underside cowling on yet. Uh, but instead we go back to the wings now and uh, finish the build of those off. I've test fitted all these parts. Now it's time to do some assembly. So I'll take everything apart. The only thing that's fixed is this spar which has had uh, 24 hours to set now. So it's nice and solid obviously sets the dihedral of the wings. Uh, I need to just do some paint preparation for these uh, wheel wells because it's difficult to get into these narrow inboard part of the wells with paint. So I'll do them while they're in this state uh, and it'll just make the whole assembly and painting easier. Okay, I've finished with the painting of the wing parts now and uh, I've already assembled the well into this port side together with the hand retraction jack uh, and I'll do the starboard side now. You can see here that the wheel bays are painted in black on one side and white on the other and I've just been careful not to make that too stark a white. It's had plenty of weathering on it, a uh, nice grimy wash and uh, quite a bit of dark earth in there as well just to dirty that up. I don't want a stark bright white. And I've done the same with the uh, surrounds to the wheel wells. The inside part of the wheel bay is in uh, the aluminium colour. So that's all done. Again picked out with a bit of a wash. Uh, so this is all ready to go together. So the uh, actual bay parts which of these just really just clip in they don't need an awful lot of uh, effort they've got some hooks on these front parts which really help to engage it down into the lower wing surface and then once it's in position I've just dropped some extra thin super glue in there just to make sure it's a really strong bond. It can't actually go anywhere because the uh, spar holds it in place. And of course the top of the wing will lock it as well. Now these are the hand retraction jacks you can see it in position here. Next we have the uh, machine guns to fit in, or the uh, barrel ends. The breaches of the gun on a Spitfire are barely visible, they're buried fairly well down uh, into the wing. So you don't get to see a lot of these. Okay, time for the top wing panels now, and I'm going to leave these overnight to dry once they're in position.
Okay, so I'm going to leave that wing now overnight to dry. And then I'll come back in the morning. We can uh, put the fillets on and get it fitted to the fuselage. Okay, that's uh, 12 hours. Just check the fit. Those wingtips are really nice and pleased with uh, those. No step at all in them. Got a bit of excess glue coming out of the back of the flat bay. I'll do the first clean up of the wing joint before I fit it to the fuselage. It's just easier to handle. This is Mr. Surfacer for the very fine seam that I've got on the front near these guns. I think what's happened here is that the the guns that are fitted inside are probably just obstructing the fit a little bit. I just remembered I had a little gap here at the spine piece. And uh, just noticed along the front of the fin as well. Because the rudder is deflected, I also want to make sure that we've got a good surface on top here. Because you're going to be able to see this top surface. We'll fit the fillets at this stage. They've cleaned up nicely. The only slight issue I've got is here right at the root. Got a gap there. Uh, and that's my fault because uh, earlier on you might remember that I removed the gun camera. Uh, and I didn't uh, make a good enough job of that. I've left a little stub in there which is just holding the wing open a little bit. But uh, it's... Not too big a problem, I'll be able to fill that. Okay, so let's get the fuselage and wing joined up.
Look, John's pretty good. Can't get much better than that. another sprue empty I just want to be careful on the back of these ailerons just to make sure that the lovely thin trailing edge is preserved so just a very gentle sand with the uh, thin stick here I'm not going to fit the uh, radiator uh, sections yet because there's some work to do on the inside. I remember at Scale Model World at Telford last year on the Qatari stand I uh, looked at the test shot of this part and it's fit onto the underwing surface. It was fantastic then and it's uh, just the same now. So uh, I'll need to do the interior detailing of those. Okay, that's one uh, finished airframe. I'll uh, do some clean up of this over the next day or two. Uh, and get a coat of primer on it. The only thing I'm slightly concerned about is the uh, sanding of this lower fuselage here uh, and how to reinstate the uh, rivets, the positive rivets. I do have some uh, rivet decals so I might try those, see what effect I get from those. But uh, apart from that it shouldn't be too long before I can get some paint on this model and uh, that's what I'll be doing in the next episode in part four so uh, hopefully you'll be able to join me for that one uh, next week uh, in the meantime enjoy your modeling everybody I know you will be enjoying your modeling if you're building this kit but for now take care and I'll see you in another few days bye for now <laughs>